If you've been on Facebook today, you'll have seen and maybe even clicked on headlines that seem to pull on your mouse pointer like a magnet. Headlines that twist your arm into clicking on them just to find out what the enticing intro does not tell you. Here's one of our own for you. We produced a feature on clickbait headlines, and you won't believe what we found out. Because the fact is, most, if not all, of the online outfits that put clickbait out there don't care if their content disappoints. The point is, you went there. You can't take that click back. And that's what advertisers care about. But as some news outlets have learned at their expense, there are some news stories that web surfers just don't want to be manipulated over. The Listening Post's Will Young now on the epidemic of clickbait and the devious tricks of a growing trick. Seriously, wow. 69 facts about New Zealand. 21 pictures that will restore your faith in humanity. 20 things that will blow your mind. Aren't headlines supposed to tell us what's in a story so you can decide whether to read it? Since when did they start promising to blow your mind? It's that sort of feeling that it's irresistible um, and you have to click on it. This is a very typical clickbait headline. A guy took a photo in the dark with flash on. What it captured is terrifying beyond words. Um, it doesn't tell you what at all this is about, but it raises the, gee, terrifying beyond words? What could it possibly be? So even if you feel kind of cynical about the headline and, and don't really want to read the story, you are almost going to have to click. There was a headline that was something like, uh, this kid died, um, and what he left behind is one-tacular, like wonderful, stuck into, spectacular. And you just never find out in the headline what the one-tacular thing is. Headlines used to be more descriptive because they assumed that the reader was kind of there to read news. Now, so you're there not to be bored. BuzzFeed probably precedes them all. They have the list thing going, I think. They own that before Upworthy. People weren't really aware of the topic quite as much, but because Upworthy keeps using the headlines in that way, and that's really how they became such an overnight success that then was mirrored by different sites. I've actually started rebelling against it. Even if it seems interesting, I'm like, mm, no, not, go not going to do it. So maybe you clicked, but did the content literally blow your mind? Did it restore your faith in humanity? Probably not. We invited BuzzFeed and Upworthy to explain their headline writing policies to us, but they said they'd rather not. We did get the Huffington Post managing editor on camera, and he says, despite what some readers might think, clickbait isn't part of the website's modus operandi. We've all gone through the experience on the internet of clicking on something, arriving at a page, and then kind of being disappointed or having it feel a little flat. That, for us, is something we try to avoid at all costs. And I think that's one of the things that may distinguish us from places that are really pushing the limit. One example that comes to mind for me is the headline that we did for the government shutdown. When the government shutdown ended, we wrote the headline, men got us into the shutdown, women got us out. So it had that bite to it. It had that humor. It kind of crystallized the moment in the right way. There were probably very few differences between the story that we wrote and the story that Politico wrote and the story that the Journal wrote and the story that the New York Times wrote. But I would, if I, had to, if I had to guess, our headline probably drew more people to our story than theirs did. And in the end, there's nothing more important than getting those clicks. In the online economy, page views equal advertising revenue. But are any methods justified for any story? In February, CNN tried clickbait tactics on a story about rape statistics. There was a backlash. The headline might have read, CNN tried out a clickbait headline, and the results shocked everybody. I understand that CNN would want to draw traffic to its article, but I don't think that that's enough of a justification with stories that are really controversial or need more nuance. You know, we're talking about rape here. How in the world can you use that kind of a clickbait headline? For that, type of a, for that type of a topic. CNN didn't see it that way. In response to its critics, it posted another tweet. Thanks for feedback. It's genuinely surprising Alaska's rape rate is so high. The story deserves attention. You may or may not agree with them, but what about this tweet from CNN from the previous month? 14-year-old girl stabbed her little sister 40 times, police say. 
The reason why will shock you. There are tactics that are okay for some newcomers that probably aren't okay for a CNN. Mainstream media are facing competitors like Upworthy and others that are growing tremendously. And they would be remiss if they didn't notice this and try to figure out how they could use some of these tactics. Now the problem is mainstream media has legacy brands to protect and these new outlets like Upworthy don't have that. In the battle for online eyeballs, media outlets tend to follow the traffic. As BuzzFeed and Upworthy's page view figures have skyrocketed, other websites have copied the clickbait formula. But there's another factor at play here, which is less about the headlines and more about one particular website that's driving a lot of those clicks, Facebook. When the social media giant changed what's known as its news feed algorithm last year, that one change channeled all kinds of highly clickable content right there where you're most likely to see it. Suddenly, clickbait was everywhere. The news feed is what you see when you log into Facebook.com. So it's like the main way that Facebook shows you content. The effect of this algorithm change was so enormous that publishers started to kind of target their stories toward Facebook users. And the Upworthy style headline really seems to work well there. I think that the way that news um, is now viewed is really heavily influenced by social media and the type of social media that's available. You know, 10 years ago, you didn't have people using Facebook. You didn't have people using Twitter. Now, you know, you share it on Facebook, you share it on Twitter. I think we will definitely experience clickbait fatigue. We're already seeing it. We're going to get tired of those types of headlines. But sites and publications change with the times, so what's clickbait this year is not going to be clickbait next year. So when you're killing time on the internet and a headline grabs you... 69 facts about New Zealand. Literally out of this world. Will you rise to the clickbait? More Global Village voices now on the scourge of clickbait. Clickbaiting is rife online today because it works. That's the simple truth of the matter. But many people feel that clickbaiting is cheapening the journalist's art. You know, clickbait is... By design, it's ephemeral, it's fleeting, it's designed to elicit an immediate, almost unthinking response from the reader. It's ultimately not a very comfortable relationship either for the journalist or the reader. In the end, superb content is what really wins, not these sensationalist headlines that are here for the moment and not going to be here for the long run. With clickbait, we're really talking more about the headline. That formula of X will make you Y, or this thing happened and you won't believe what happened next. This said, if a clickbaity title gets more people reading a great piece, I think that's only a good thing. Though, it, it can feel a little bit cheap, the deception, the bait part. Because essentially, when you use a clickbaity title, you're saying the content doesn't matter. Right now, maybe people are getting wise to it, sure, but still they're keeping on clicking. 